Hi there to you. Hope I find you well. I'm Jenny Kirk. Welcome you back up here to Weir Yard in the Loft. Now today I'd like to extend a big big thank you to TRS Trains who have loaned me one of their steam conversion locomotives. This is the smoke unit that they do. As you saw in a previous video we're very very lucky to be able to road test the Tornado model that they did with that uh, smoke unit and it was really really impressive and I know a lot of you guys were incredibly impressed as well. Now we've got details to their Facebook page in the description box down below but this model is something even more special. Not least because it's an awful lot smaller. It's one of the Hatton's 14XX auto tanks which you would have thought would have been a challenging enough proposition just to fit sound in. Well, they've gone a couple of steps further. They fitted a stay alive, they fitted a uh, detailed crew from Hardy's Hobbies. It's fully custom weathered as well, and that weathering too, as you'll see in the video, is really, really well done. But it's got TRS Train's uh, signature smoke unit in there, which uses water as a fuel, so it doesn't get hot. It uh, kind of atomizes it rather than turns it to steam and blasts it out synchronized with the sound unit so that the chuffs which are synchronized to the wheels and the motion are also synchronized to that jet of smoke and the quantity of it is also regulated by the system so it really does look effective but don't just take my word for it come with me and I'm really really looking forward to showing you this TRS Trains 14XX auto tank with the full works on this conversion. I was really impressed with the tornado that TRS train sent over. This smoke unit really is a game changer. As I said in that video, it um, actually produces a much more realistic stream of smoke. And the way it's controlled as well, you can see the locomotive is there just simmering away. And if I change its direction and get it uh, up and running, it's got it synced with the chuff rate and uh, that looks far better than any other smoke unit which I've ever seen on the market. And I believe that it uses an ultrasound technique. There's some kind of plate or dish in there that agitates the water. So when you actually hold your finger over the top, that is not hot. If anything, it actually feels cool as it blasts out. So there's no real risk of overheating. It's not going to damage the model, which is another thing which more traditional smoke units can do. I've seen many an old uh, plastic bodied model that has got a little bit twisty because of excessive heat from a smoke unit. And uh, there's just no risk of that with this. Now using bottled or distilled water, um, it's just simply a case of with the enclosed pipette, uh, I've already got some water in there, you can actually with this one fill it on the fly. Some of the detail pieces here on the boiler have been drilled out so I can put that in there and whilst it is actually doing its thing I can put some more water in. So we never actually need to stop this locomotive as long as you get to it before it runs out of water then you're absolutely fine and uh, one of the things I have found is that actually there's a few little quirks as um, I started running this just to get the smoke unit running but very very quickly you get a feel for what it's doing and what it needs. Now the first thing is that these little detail holes here there's two of them one either side. What you've got to make sure is that you don't overfill it this is much more finicky than the Tornado was, but in all honesty, it is so small, it's allowed to be a little bit more finicky. We've got a stay alive in there, we've got the sound in there, and if you're wondering, that on top of the tanks is not actually water. I've not been messy when I've filled it before. 
that is quite simply a really really great weathering finish uh, using what looks like gloss varnish to make it look like it's uh, got water there from when it's been filled up by the crew but if you do overfill it you'll find that you just don't get the smoke coming out and actually it's really easy because you don't have to take the smoke box door off on this to just put in the pipette suck out a little bit of the water and then I find actually quickly blowing down the funnel a couple of times clears that plate or dish that is doing the ultrasound and allows it to do its thing if it becomes swamped it just can't clear the water it can't atomize it but with a lot of playing around here I've actually found that this particular version of the TRS trains smoke unit is more reliable in operation or at least much easier to use uh, once I learnt its little quirks what I've actually found is that it's really easy to keep it smoking and you know you get a feel of how much water you can put in uh, with this in all honesty it's about half a pipette it does say in the instructions one pipette but I've actually found it much better with half a pipette and just be prepared to refill it often and you can see there that it stopped smoking now that either means it's run out if I just get it moving and yeah so what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to blow some of the air out of the pipette just to shake off oops the end there um, really difficult to do whilst you're filming so I'm just going to put that into there and I am going to suck some of the excess water out now I'm going to turn the smoke unit on and off if you do run out of water it just automatically turns itself off uh, which is a great uh, feature really but uh, what you will find is on your controller it doesn't automatically turn off so you've got to turn it off and then turn it back on again and there we are just lowering the water level a little bit and we've got the smoke to uh, do its thing again um, if it uh, as I said before if it runs out completely you'll then have to reset the smoke unit if you overfill it and you get water on the mechanism in there it doesn't hurt it but just blowing down the funnel a couple of times once you've got the water level down to a proper level does work wonders to actually uh, just clear that and get it working. The sound file on this is courtesy of a Zemo chip from, um, I believe I was told it was DigiTrains that it came from. And actually, I, I really like this sound file. It doesn't sound generic in any way. It sounds like a locomotive that's led a hard life. So you've got the wheezing, the clanking, and really, really good. Now, the chuff rate uh, is matched to the motion, as far as I can tell and also chucking that uh, smoke out of the funnel is also matched to the chuff as well as you can see there and I'm guessing it uses uh, at least one possibly two of the function outputs of the decoder so you can imagine that um, this is actually quite an involved installation and really just the fact that uh, TRS trains have managed to fit this into a locomotive as small as a 14XX auto tank just shows that I'm guessing there really probably is almost no locomotive that they couldn't fit this to. We're going to show now some shots I've had it running both here on Weir Yard and I've also sent it around the test track at work and I'm just really pleased with that performance. It managed about 20 minutes on a full fill and um, it was no hard work really to refill it. You didn't have to take it off the track, you didn't have to remove the smoke box door. So overall a lot easier than that Tornado model even though you would have thought that something smaller like this would have been even more finicky. The drilling out of the detail holes in the boiler 
is unobtrusive but exceptionally effective to get it all working. Well, I hope you found this video really enjoyable. Don't forget that you can go and check us out over on Patreon. And if you want to, you can help us to continue to be able to make the videos that you want to see. We've also got the merchandise down below that you can purchase anything from hoodies to t-shirts to die cut stickers. My books are also available and of course the Jenny Monday Club Wagon from Rails of Sheffield is one that is an absolute must for any member of the Monday Club crew. And uh, if you like this video do tickle that like button. Share as well because sharing is caring and if you haven't already done so subscribe to the channel and click notifications all to be the first to hear about new videos as and when they go up. But until next time this is me Jenny Kirk saying you take great care of yourself and a big big thank you to TRS Trains of course for sending over this amazing little model for review. But until next time you take great care of yourself. Bye for now. I'd like to send out a huge thanks to everybody who supports me on Patreon and an extra special huge thanks goes out to Anthony Kidson, Offshore Allen, OORail.co.uk, Michael Lockie, Helen Sink, Peter Bolton, Brian and Dorothy Mudd, Gary Lewis, David Quinn, Sparky107107, George Botterini, Chris Moss, Robert Steers, MD of San Juan Model Company and Grantline Products, Sam Yates, Dale Williams, John N. from NC, NYMRish, Jonathan Foster, Peter, Graham Foster, Clifford Ison, Larry W. Grant, NI Railways 4000 class, Ian Coulson, and Alan Dickerson. Thank you. Without you guys, I couldn't do this.